All right, I finally found the article proving that in 1998, the United States Armed Institute of Pathology traveled to Alaska for the sole purpose of exhuming bodies that were infected with this um, 1918 flu and resurrect this virus. So this is a New York Times article right here. It was published Sunday, February 8, 1998. It's entitled, Alaskan Victim of 1918 Flu Yields Sample of Killer Virus. A specimen of the influenza virus that killed 21 million people in the 1918 worldwide epidemic has been recovered from the frozen remains of a flu victim buried in Alaska. Researchers at the Armed Institute of Pathology announced on Thursday that biopsy samples from a corpse exhumed from a cemetery in Brevig, Michigan, Alaska contain genetic material for the, from the flu. Experts have said that analyzing the genetic pattern of the 1918 virus will help scientists learn how it was able to kill so many people and will help them prepare vaccines against the virus if it resurfaces. Now, they said it right here. Their first priority was finding out how it killed so many people, maybe so they could recreate it as a bioweapon. And their second priority was um, preparing vaccines in case it accidentally got released from the laboratory or something like that. Last year, Army researchers identified the flu virus in preserved lung specimens taken during autopsies of soldiers killed by the flu in 1918 at military bases in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and Camp Upton, New York, which is now the site of the Brooklyn National Laboratory on Long Island. At Brevig, Michigan, Dr. Johan Holton, a retired San Francisco pathologist, exhumed four bodies from mass grave and found that one, an obese woman, had been well preserved. Tissue from her lung contained genes of the killer flu. Now, why did they have to travel to Alaska to exhume this obese woman? Well, it says that, I mean, they had samples from, from soldiers killed in 1918 that they preserved, right? Well, it says at the bottom of the article, the 1918 genes were first isolated last year from the lung tissue of an RV private who had died in Fort Jackson. Army doctors in 1918 preserved specimens in formaldehyde and wax from the 43,000 servicemen killed by the flu. So they had isolated the virus, but it wasn't live because those specimens were, for, were preserved in formaldehyde and wax. They needed one that had been frozen the whole time to, re, to resurrect this virus. Now this is Je Dr. Jeffrey T K. Toppenberger, the one who wrote the article in the New England Journal of Medicine. He says, um, Jeffrey K. Toppenberger, the Armed Forces of Institute of Pathology, said last year that the genetic pattern of the 1918 flu virus was unlike that of any other flu, but was closely related to that of the so-called swine flu. He said that although the 19th epidemic was called the Spanish flu, the virus apparently was a mutation that evolved in American pigs and was spread by United States troops mobilized for World War One. So he, he says right here the 1918 virus was just a mutation of the swine flu, but he had to go to Alaska to dig it up so they could, they could have some of it. And here's the article that Jeffrey K. Toppenberger wrote on the CDC.gov website. Emerging Infectious Diseases is called um, 1918 Fluenza when Flu influenza, the mother of all pandemics. Now, in this article, he explains the whole virus, why it's so deadly to to people age 18 to 35. You know what what was so different about this virus? But in this article, he omits he omits the fact that he found that he went and exhumed the dead bodies here. He just talks about using the specimens from the 1918 that were preserved in the Army's labs. So he's leaving out some information here 